Interview with Alvin Drew, take one. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm Alvin Drew. And Jaden Jefferson, nice to meet you. So I know you're joining us to talk about your experience in the Air Force. Yes. What were some of the planes that you did get to fly? And uh, how was that experience for you? Was it rewarding or how did that, how did that turn out for you? So it was, for me, it was very rewarding to go fly different airplanes. I started off flying helicopters, and helicopters is the best way to describe it, is, is like going out on a, a motocross or four-wheeling. Um, it, it's rough, it's tumble, it's, it's, you know, you come back, you know, spattered in mud and, you know, and, and things like that, and it's that, that sense of adrenaline. Whereas if you're out in a, in a supersonic jet, like I got to go fly T-38s or F-16s, uh, you're out there planning, you know, you've got to be, say, a minute ahead of that airplane at all times, and sometimes that plane's going to speed of sound, which puts you a long way out where you're running math. Okay, if I'm going to dive, I need to pull out of this dive with this many G's by this amount of altitude or I will hit the ground. So it was a very different rewarding experience for me. Plus, you know, just the things just happen faster. You point up and you watch your earth just drop away because you're going 500 knots straight up. So I'm grateful that I got to do both of those different things and not just one of them. Your story is similar to a lot of people who said they looked up in the sky and said, I want to fly that plane. A lot of people, you know, they don't think much of it but you did and you came out with this positive result and kind of, you know, when you were uh, flying those planes, were there any, you know, fears you had, anything that was stopping you from doing that, that you overcame to be able to do it? I said the biggest issue was always just self-doubt. Like, who am I to get behind the controls of this airplane and go roaring around the sky and bring it safely back and you'll get to that spot where you think, Am I ready for this? And it helps always to have somebody there who just go give it a shot. What were some of the connections that you have that are long lasting and are you still have to this day? So when I first announced I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, I had an aunt who had a friend who was a Tuskegee Airman and he had an airplane out in one of the fields near Washington, D.C. I remember sitting out in his um, in his King Air airplane and he's explained to me all the different things about what it was like to be a Tuskegee Airman. And flying, and so what, it wasn't just with him, but it was with this whole group of folks out there, told the ski gearman who had set that path in front of us, uh, where I continuously crossed paths with these folks out there, and they were always very, very helpful, up to and including uh, General Charles McGee. We're, we're still trading stories, and he's still giving me useful advice. It's hard to believe I'm in my almost 60 and still getting great advice from somebody, but he's got about 40 years on me still, so there's lots to learn from him. Well, the Tuskegee Airmen made history. They were um, the black pilots that we all know today. And how did they inspire you? Because, you know, now it's, it's, it's as important as ever that we have African Americans and minorities that are taking part in these careers. So for you to be doing that, I mean, what's your outlook on that opportunity? Do you view it as, well, I'm just another person who's doing this, or I, this is an honor for you? How do you view that? Okay, so a couple of different ways. So the first thing was back when I watched the Apollo 11 crew land um, and I asked about should I become an astronaut. The next question that came out of my mouth was, can somebody black actually be an astronaut? This was just after the Civil Rights Act had just been passed and so there's still segregation had not departed from our society. And my dad said Air Force has already picked a black astronaut. Um, man, he was unfortunately killed in an aircraft accident, but it was all I needed to know. So once that barrier was down, it was on me at that point. If I didn't succeed, it was because I had failed, not because there was some barrier out there, social barrier between me and that goal. I didn't have the excuse. From their pers my perspective, what they did was socially significant. Uh, Benjamin O. Davis, the first commander of the Tuskegee Airmen, said his least favorite words in the English language were first and only. And what I liked best about my job was all the things I did as a pilot and as an astronaut. None of them were first or onlys. Uh, it was just a regular thing. Nobody raised their eyebrows. Like, Isn't it great that you're a black pilot? No, this is it's great that you're a pilot. In one sense, the fact that nothing I'm doing is significant, I find to be of great significance to me. They, they have paved that path to where it's just, we're just accepted. And there's nothing unusual. All you have to do is have the drive and work hard and go out there and get it. There's no excuse for anybody out there to not try. Well, I think we think alike because that's also how I like to th um, think about it because now when you see an African-American doing things like this your first thought is African-American. The visual intent and goal was to make it normal and mainstream and the fact that you had not used 
you know, your race as an excuse for not getting things done is inspiring to me. I'm sure it's going to be inspiring to many other people. So kind of the people that are still thinking of this as, look, I can't do this because I'm black or they're not going to let me, what, what do you say to them? Not only have we done it, we're still doing it. And so what's your reason for sitting back and saying you can't do it? We've been in the White House. We've been in space. Uh, we've been heads of, of Fortune 500 companies. Uh, what exactly do you think was holding those people back? You know, yes. and, and those are the same things that are holding you back. So get off your tail and go. Well, thank you so much for joining me. You bet.